They murdered a teenager for $10 and a ham sandwich. In tonight's Crimes of the Cape Fear report, we're taking a look back at one of the most senseless crimes in Wilmington's history, the murder of Josh Prouty. In a matter of minutes, five young people's lives were changed forever. WECT investigative reporter Ann McAdams takes a look back at the lessons learned from this tragic murder. If I could rewind back, I would listen to my conscience. This is the face of regret. Daniel Henry, just 17 years old, coming to grips with the crime he'd just committed that cost Joshua Prouty his life. He put the gun to his head and said, it's a robbery, like, give me what you got. And, and dude, Josh was like, man, I don't have anything. Why are y'all, like, y'all trying to, y'all robbing the wrong one? On December 13th, 2012, 19-year-old Prouty was simply leaving work at the Hannah Block Community Arts Center when he got robbed in a dark parking lot. All he had to offer, the $10 in his wallet. The gunman, Quintel Grady, shot and killed him for it. Prouty dropped the ham sandwich he'd just ordered from Jimmy John's, and his killers took that too. I sat there for a minute. I was, I was stunned, like, shot him. I just sat there for a good, like, a minute before I, I ran, you know? Henry said he and his friends were just looking for a quick way to get some gas money, and he had no idea Quintel Grady would actually pull the trigger. But no one was more stunned than Patty Prouty, Joshua's mother. There's nothing that anyone can tell me from this day forward until the day I die that's going to make sense. He was just a, a very loving, kind, uh, gentle soul who I don't know that ever had an enemy. Within days of the murder, one of Prouty's attackers was out in the community talking about the crime and someone tipped off Wilmington police. One by one, detectives arrested the four people involved in Prouty's death. In the nearly 10 years that have passed since then, District Attorney Ben David has used this case as a teaching opportunity when talking to young people and their parents. In this case, we had one bullet, but we had four defendants charged with first degree murder. And if you look at what they ultimately got convicted of, they all went off to prison. The trigger man for truly life without parole, and he was a young man too, and the other three for a combined almost 100 years. And what it points up is that you're only as good as the company you keep. And while some thought it was harsh to send all four defendants to decades behind bars, prosecutors disagree. Every now and then you see something that is just absolutely inexplicable, where life seemingly has no value. And in those moments, you have to make sure that the punishment fits the crime, because that means anyone could be the next target. There's no good reason for why people kill. And particularly in this case, you can't say there's any reason because it was $10 and a ham sandwich. While the Prouty's lives will never be the same following Joshua's death, neither will the lives of the young people who made the fateful choice to take his life. I just want to tell Josh's parents, man. I'm sorry, Ms. Ms. Prouty. I did not know, man. Ten years after the fact, Patty Prouty says she still wakes up every day and forgets for a split second that her son is dead before she remembers and the pain comes back. In one split second, my whole world crashed. Patty says she's watched Daniel Henry's jailhouse interview a hundred times over the years and feels deep sadness over the sheer waste of her son's life and Daniel's. A 17-year-old kid went to prison for most of his life, and I don't think he knew what he had gotten himself into. I do think he was shocked, and I do think he was um, sorry, but, you know, sorry doesn't sorry doesn't help me except to know that he's a human being. Patty Prouty sued the city after her son's death, arguing that the poor lighting in the downtown Wilmington parking lot was a contributing factor in his murder. The city added more lighting and settled with Prouty out of court. Fran, she used proceeds from the settlement to start a charity that provides positive activities for at-risk children to keep them from turning to crime. Wow, she's a strong woman, and I'm sure she still thinks of her son almost every day. 
Fran, she does, as you heard her say, she says she wakes up and for a split second she forgets that he died and then reality hits. He would have celebrated his 29th birthday a couple of weeks ago. And as you can imagine, Fran, that is a pain that simply never goes away. Absolutely, even after 10 years. Thanks so much, Ann, for that report.